Hello, my name is Zine here, and I love anime. Anybody who knows me knows that I love anime. It is probably my favorite form of media ever. And there's a video I've been wanting to make for a very, very long time, but of course, I don't actually own a computer, if you guys haven't caught on to that already. Uh, I do not own a computer, so I can't really make a traditional tier list video, which of course, if you read the title, this is my ultimate anime tier list, a video I've been wanting to make for so freaking long. But then I thought to myself, why not? Just make a physical tier list. So here is my tier list right here, and I will be going through every single anime that I have watched and ranking them from S plus, S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, or D tier. We're not going to be using F tier in here because in my opinion, there's no such thing as an F tier anime. All anime takes so much passion to make. It is such a, it's such a, just such a unique and valuable um, piece of media, in my opinion, and I've never really sat, I've never seen an anime that I would consider, like, F tier. Certainly I've seen some that I wasn't really my taste or whatever, but I still feel like even those ones that weren't really my taste, I'm sure there are people out there who love them, so I would not feel comfortable, you know, talking shit on them or throwing them in F tier. In my opinion, it's just no such thing as, as it, so we're probably not gonna use the F tier whatsoever, but S plus S, A, B, C, and D. And I have a list here of all of the anime I have ever watched. However, there is one rule for that. I have to have watched at least three episodes of it. So if I haven't watched at least three episodes of it, I will not be ranking it in this video. I feel like if I've watched three episodes, that's enough for me to give it a ranking, although I should be a little bit more fair to it, should be uh, not very mean to it or anything like that, because I haven't finished it, obviously. So uh, that is the rule there. So for example, I have only watched like an episode and a half of Cowboy Bebop, so I, I won't be ranking Cowboy Bebop on here. I've watched like one episode of Jojo so I will not I will not be ranking Jojo on this list and because I have watched so many fucking anime we will be doing this in parts of four so in this episode I will be ranking A through G we'll be going through each letter of the alphabet um and going through that, and I believe there's going to be four parts in total, which I'll do the math and all that later, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be four parts in total. So it's going to be a bit of a longer adventure, a, lo a bit of a longer series, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and this was necessary because... I am someone who just rambles and rambles and rambles, so there's no way I could do all of this in like one or two parts. So we have to do it like this, especially since this is probably going to be the longest part because we have A, B, and D in this, which is just filled to the brim. Like there is so many freaking shows. I have watched a ton of anime. So without further ado, let's jump into this and start off with A. And let's just jump into it with a absolute Big heavy hitter, of course. What starts with A? What's the first thing that starts with A when you think of anime? That's right. Sasayana! Sasayana! Attack on Titan. Okay. What needs to be said about Attack on Titan at this point? It's widely regarded as one of the greatest animes of all time. And in my opinion, I'm going to be honest, it's not my favorite anime of all time. But I do believe that it is probably the greatest anime of all time. I, I don't think there's really any touching Attack on Titan. From pretty much beginning to end, Attack on Titan is god tier. It, it is one of the most brilliantly, masterfully told stories that I have ever seen. The story itself is just brilliant. It is absolutely incredible. The way the show just never holds back during anything whatsoever, how it will just constantly kill off characters that you thought were going to be great, and how it does it so ruthlessly, it never leaves your mind. There are scenes from Attack on Titan that I am still thinking about to this day that just freak me the fuck out. There are characters that are just absolute show stealers like Levi, Mikasa, Eren, his arc throughout the show is absolutely legendary. Even smaller characters I think really, really shine a lot like Flock from the last two seasons. I thought he was an awesome character. Um, Attack on Titan is just goaded. It's one of the greatest animes of all time in some ways. I would say it is the greatest anime of all time. Uh, this is like... I'm someone who's a harsh critic critic for like shonens, and you're gonna see that throughout this series, and a lot of people out there know that. And even I can say that this is one of the greatest animes of all time. Attack on Titan would easily break my top 10 animes of all time, and it's a masterpiece. It's absolutely immaculate. So, with that being said, Attack on Titan is obviously going in S+. So I'm just gonna put A, O, T, and I'm just gonna put a little box around it. There we go. Next up! A Place Further Than the Universe. This is what I watched recently. So this is a cute girls doing cute things anime, and uh, this is a genre that I'm very, very fond of. One of my favorite animes of all time is actually a part of this genre. And this show is one that I heard, had heard about for a very, very long time, so when I finally checked it out, I was really, really excited to do so. And I would say that A Place Further Than the Universe 
is definitely the most pristine cute girls doing cute things anime that I have personally ever seen. This is a really, really, really amazing show. It is just very, very deep and it's a lot. Like, this show will do many, many things to you. It's very uplifting, but at point it's also very heartbreaking. And it's just brilliantly made. Uh, the music is phenomenal. The character development is amazing. The characters themselves are amazing. The only problem that I had with this show is that the story is about four girls going to Antarctica. So it's, it's not the most interesting sounding story, but it did manage to be very, very, very fun to watch. However, the story is very, very, it, there's a lot to it. And I, the only thing I don't, the only problem I have with this show that is going to bump it down for me is I don't think there's any rewatch value in this show. I don't think I'll ever want to rewatch the show. And for a cute girls doing cute things anime, I feel like that's kind of a hit to it. Now, on one way, I definitely think it is the most pristine, highest quality of the genre that I have ever seen. In some ways, I actually don't, I think calling it a cute girls doing cute things anime is a bit of a like downplay to this show because it's really because the show is just really fucking brilliant like there's a scene towards the end of this show if you've seen the show i'm sure you know what scene i'm talking about that will have you on the fucking floor with just waterfalls coming out of your eyes it is oh my god it's a scene that will like break you like seriously and um it, it really it's an amazing show i cannot recommend it enough especially if you're a fan of this uh, genre but for me, since it's not as rewatchable, like I really don't think I'll ever really want to rewatch this show just because of how it's 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 a lot, man. You have to go through this entire arc with these four girls and you have to watch everything that they go through and it's just a lot. So I don't really feel like I'll ever really want to rewatch this show. That being said though, I think that you could take the most, like, the, the guy who hates this genre the most on this planet and, like, strap him to a chair and force him to watch this, and I guarantee you he would probably not be able to deny the quality of this show. So for that reason, I'm going to put a place for the mini universe in the S tier. Not in the S+, plus because of the rewatch value, but I definitely think this is easily one of the greatest cute girls doing cute things anime of all time, if not the greatest. All right, I'm just gonna put a place further because I'll know what I'm talking about and put a little box. Next up, Adi Furetta from Common Place to World Strong. Everybody knows I love this show, but um, where am I gonna put it? Because obviously this show is not S plus or S tier. Um, so I love Adi Furetta so much. Uh, I'm a huge fan of isekais and I really, really love isekais that are more unique and do a little bit more uh, and have a little bit more fun with the genre. And one of my favorite kinds of those is when they do a betray isekai, similar to Rising of the Shield Hero, which I definitely feel is the gold standard for betrayal and but for betrayal isekai but i personally think audi Furetta is a very 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 close second i really really freaking love this show i think it is awesome it is so much fun to watch the characters are a blast the music is amazing i love audi Furetta. um it definitely has a ton of problems especially specifically the cgi in part one is just really really fucking bad and at times it definitely does feel very run-of-the-mill isekai-ish you know you've got a very overpowered main character he's great i love him but he is kind of a typical overpowered as all hell isekai character and you know he gets a harem and all that like the show's nothing pristine it's nothing incredible it's nothing jaw-dropping but it's a lot of fun and you and if you haven't watched it and you like isekais i would highly recommend it i've watched this show twice <laughs> i'm gonna put Ari Furetta in a tier because that in my opinion is where it belongs. <laughs> I know I'm like the only person who thinks that, but I do. Next up is a couple of cuckoos. So I didn't finish this one. I got about like 10 episodes into this and then for some reason I stopped. And I don't really know why I stopped because I was really, really enjoying this show. Uh, I thought it was really, really fun. I really enjoyed the character of Hero, the girl with the purple hair. I thought she was really great. Other, all the other characters I thought were okay. I kind of liked Erika a little bit, um, but the show didn't, I guess, grab me as much as I was expect as much as I thought it would because I was really, really enjoying it at the time. But I guess I just got kind of bored with it, and I haven't picked it back up since. Maybe someday I'll pick it back up again. Only got ten episodes, so I didn't even start the second half of it. Um, but uh, I would say I had fun with it, and I'll put a couple of cuckoos in the B tier. There we go. Of. Cuckoos. Alrighty. B tier. Alrighty, next up, Ancient Magus Bride. I only watched about four episodes of this because I got kind of bored, unfortunately. But I was really, really, I thought the show had definitely a lot of things that I was enjoying about it. But, like, we entered, like, episode four where they were doing some, like, shit with, like, this dragon village. And I just, I don't know, I just lost interest. I just didn't really want to see where it was going. I kind of enjoyed the show when it was kind of just 
the the guy with the freaking like the horse skull head and the ancient magus bride I, I kind of enjoyed it when it's kind of just a slice of life between those two characters but when it started like getting into the story and like doing that i found i just didn't really care all that much so maybe someday i'll come back to this but at the moment i just don't really i don't really have any strong feelings towards this show or any reason to go back to it um but i did think there was some quality here so i'll put this in the uh i'll put this in the b tier there we go. Ancient... I'll just say Ancient Magus. There we go. Alright. Assassination Classroom. Another show I did not finish. I got about 10 episodes into this. This was a lot of fun, but it's very repetitive. Uh, like, it was pretty much just the same shit every single episode. I don't want to be too mean to this, because I think there's a lot of quality in this show. I enjoy the opening. I enjoy a lot of the characters. Uh, specifically the main character, Nagisa. I thought he was very, very cool. Uh, a few of the side characters. I'm having a hard time. It's been a long time since I started watching, since I uh, watched the 10 episodes I did of this show. But I enjoyed a good bit of it, and I definitely think there is some quality here. The, the teacher, Kuro-sensei, is also a very, very cool character. But it was just very repetitive. It was kind of just the same shit over and over and over again. Just like every episode was kind of just the same thing over and over again. And, I don't know, I just got kind of stale of it, got kind of tired of it, and I lost interest pretty fast. So, maybe someday I'll come back to this. Uh, I would definitely like to, but, again, I can't really deny the quality of this. So, once again, I will put this in um, B tier. I'm going to put ass class, because that's what everybody calls it. <laughs> Alrighty. A Hot and Sun Wahakarane. I checked out a few episodes of this. This is made by the same people who made Comey Can't Communicate, and it's a very similar show to Comey Can't Communicate. I thought it was a little bit better. I enjoyed the characters a little bit more in this. I thought it was a little bit cuter, uh, a little bit more fun, but I still didn't really have anything to say about it, and after six episodes, I was pretty uninterested in continuing, so I'm gonna throw this in the C tier. I'm gonna just put A Hot and Sun. There we go. Alrighty. Another one of the, the first horror anime up here. I loved this. I thought this was so cool. Uh, this is, a, I think this is a very love or hate anime. Uh, there's, at times, this show just feels really creepy and really brilliant and really well made. And at other times, it feels like an absolute joke of a show. But I, I, th I enjoyed the hell out of it. I genuinely really, really liked it. Especially the first, like, five episodes I thought were genuinely awesome. And I think this, uh, this show's opening is so awesome, dude. Like, this was an instant, instant add to my playlist when I heard the opening. Such a great opening, so. And the opening is just really, really, really cool, honestly. Like, the opening will get you hooked. It's just a really, really awesome opening. I'd say it's actually probably one of my favorite anime openings of all time. Um, so I'm gonna put another in A tier. There we go. Alrighty, and our final anime of the A category, Ascendance of a Bookworm. This is an awesome fucking isekai. If you have not watched Ascendance of a Bookworm, it is so, so worth watching because it is such a unique isekai. Very, very cool, very unique, great main character, very unique from your typical, like, OP is all hell isekai character. She is still kind of OP, but in, like, a indirect way. She's still a very, very cool, but she's a very, very cool character. There's some side characters that are also very cool. Honestly, all of the characters I thought were very, very fun to watch. Um... Yeah, this is a great show. I'd highly recommend checking this out if you haven't. It's really, really fun, especially if you love stuff like Mushoka Tensei or ReZero. I would consider, like, elevated isekai. I would personally put Ascendance of a Bookworm up there with those shows. All right, I'm just going to put Bookworm, because I'll know what I'm talking about. There we go. I'm going to put it in A tier. All righty, on to the Bs. Blood Blockade Battlefront. I watched a few episodes of this. I really liked the opening, but aside from that, there was nothing I really latched onto. And one thing I really disliked about this show was how stuff just kind of happened with absolutely, like, no explanation whatsoever. Like, one of the first things that happens is, like, one of the main characters has, like, this ring that shoots this, like, red beam, and it's, like, his power or whatever. They never fucking explain it. He just does it, and then they move on. They never explain how the power even works, at least from what I've seen. I don't know. The writing just felt very sloppy at times. I just had no idea what the fuck was going on and I lost interest very fast but the opening was very good <laughs> I'm gonna put blood blockade battlefront in C tier blood blockade all right I'm just gonna put blood blockade that'll be enough Boongo Stray Dogs. Didn't get too far into this. I watched season one and then I just lost all interest. I thought season one was very, very cool, but then they started delving into the backstory of uh, Des Desai or something like that, and I was just so uninterested. The whole like Port Mafia backstory thing just completely lost to me. I was just really bored. I was struggling to get through any of those episodes. And by the end of season one, I just felt this was such, this was just another like Studio Bones show that I just, oh God. Um, you're gonna notice this throughout this series, but Studio Bones is just a studio that I just don't like, man. Their, their stuff just never, ever manages to impress me, ever. So, Bungo Stray Dogs, for me, is gonna be a C tier. Actually, 
I really enjoyed some of the characters in Boongo Stray Dogs. Like, I liked the doctor a lot, the girl who had to, like, make you, like, almost kill you in order to heal you. I thought she was very cool. And I did like, and I did like De Desai a lot. I forget his first name. I did like Desai a lot. He was a very fun character. I liked the main character a good bit as well. I actually thought he was a pretty solid main character. Um, but the show just failed to latch me. It, it just failed to catch me. The opening was pretty mid. Uh, the music in general is pretty mid. It's just, it's all the problems that I have with all of Studio Bones' show. Like, it, they always, on the surface, they're always, like, good, but then you just, like, you just can't, I just, you can never, I can never be bothered to give a fuck about them. I can never, they never manage to do anything to become, like, a special show to me, so... Boomo Stray Dogs, I'll put it in B tier, because I can't deny there was some quality in there, and who knows, again, I only watched season one of this, and there's four seasons of this, so maybe it gets way better, but I'm going to go with B tier for now. Boomo Dogs, I'm just going to put, there we go. Alrighty, Black Lagoon, I saw about 20 episodes of this. Uh, this is a weird, I don't really know why I stopped watching this, because it was really, really good. Black Lagoon is a lot of fun, man. Really cool freaking show. Uh, mostly about, like, assassins and pirates. Very R-rated, very, like, bloody and awesome. Revy, in particular, is a really awesome character. I also really loved, I forget her name, but the nun lady was absolutely awesome. And the Chinese assassin lady, who's my favorite character the whole show. Uh, this show was a lot of fun. I did lose interest at about episode 20, and I don't really know why, because it was pretty much just awesome from there. I do eventually want to go back and finish this, for sure. Um, but I only got to episode 20 so far, but I definitely would not be surprised if it continues to be awesome throughout that. So for that reason, I'm going to give Black Lagoon an A tier. I would definitely recommend checking it out if you have not. Very cool show. It is Madhouse, too. Opening is a little bit meh, though. Opening's a little bit meh. Alrighty, Bleach. Oh boy, here we go. Bleach. When Bleach... I've said this before. When Bleach is moving its plot, when Bleach is actually going forward, it is great. It is really good. The music is awesome. A lot of the characters are great, like uh, Uriu, Chad, pretty much all of the captains. There's a lot to love about Bleach. But then, Bleach just takes fucking forever to get anywhere. Like, the perfect example I can give is I tried re-watching Bleach like a few freaking, like a few years ago. And when I was a kid, I watched Bleach. I binged the whole thing very, very fast. Like, probably, I probably watched the whole show in like three or four months. When I tried to rewatch it a couple years ago, I got to the episode where he fights the bald guy. And that fight, literally, I think it takes like five episodes. And 90% of the fight is just Ichigo and the bald guy just talking. Literally, like, they'll slash, and they'll, like, move aside, and then they'll just talk to each other for, like, ten minutes straight, and then they'll finally do another slash. And it's just like, when I was a kid, I was like, okay, I guess this is just how anime is. I guess this is just how they fight in anime. Now that I've grown up and I've watched so many anime, this is garbage, dude. This way of fighting, this way of showing a fight between two characters is the absolute worst thing ever. I've heard people say that, like... Jujutsu, that, like, Bleach is better than Jujutsu Kaisen, I could not disagree more, because, yes, they're, like, the exact same fucking story, but Jujutsu Kaisen literally tells, like, the exact same story that Bleach told in, like, 200 episodes in 25 episodes. It's just, there's so much shit in Bleach that is just so unnecessary to be there, and it's not even just the filler arcs, like, all the filler arcs suck, but it's just the meandering. All it does is just meander and meander and meander, dude. It, and it's just boring. It's boring as shit. So for that reason, I'm going to put Bleach in C tier. Alrighty. Alrighty. Black Summoner. This is going to be a fast one. Uh, this was an uh, isekai I checked out because I wanted to check out a new isekai and I heard good things about this. I don't know why I heard good things about it because this it was generic as fuck. I lost interest super duper fast. I'm going to put this in C tier. Opening was decent. Mm -mm, there we go. Black Summoner. That was a fast one. Uh, Beastars. I watched about five episodes of this. This show has one of the greatest fucking openings ever. First, let me say that. Oh my god. The opening to this show is... Wow, it is a masterpiece. It is so freaking good. Um, but with that being said, the show did not catch me. Uh, it did not latch me. I thought there was a lot of quality there. Like, the writing I thought was very, very high tier. And I definitely think there is a story there that if I went back and finished, I'm sure I would like it a lot more. But I have really, I haven't thought about this show since, like, ranking it right now. So, uh, I don't think there's really anything too incredible about it. But there was definitely quality there. It just wasn't something that I was interested in. So, I'm gonna put B-Stars in B-tier. 
Because I can't... You know what? Yeah, I'm going to put B tier. Maybe if I went back and finished it, maybe it would be an A tier, but for now it's B tier. And my final and my final of B is Buddy Daddies. Uh, this was a fun little show. I enjoyed this quite a bit. It's similar to Spy Family, but it's different enough, I feel, that it's still really worth watching. Um, it's fun. I, I liked this. It had some good stuff. It, had a gr it has a great opening. I'm about Buddy Daddies in A tier. No, I'm, gonna, I'm B tier, B tier. I, I don't think it's A tier. There we go. Buddy Daddies. All right. C, we're on to C. All right, first up, Chainsaw Man. Look, this show is incredible. Chainsaw Man is such a phenomenal freaking anime. The problem with Chainsaw Man is that we only have 12 episodes and it looks like we're not going to be getting any more because the show was a huge flop. So it, it wasn't a flop in hype, it was a flop in profit. Like they made almost no money off of it. So I can't really see a future where we're going to get a continuation of the anime. So eventually I might go check out the manga um, to see where it goes because... Season 1, I can't deny, every single episode of Season 1 was perfect. It was fucking phenomenal. It is such an amazing show. I've watched it twice. But there's just not enough to latch onto in terms of an anime. There's a whole manga out there, and again, I very, I definitely have, I'm definitely interested in maybe checking out the manga and finishing it, but um, I can't, I don't think we're going to get any more of this, so I don't really know how to rank it as an anime. In terms of quality, it's obviously S+, but because... There's so little of it, I don't feel like there's really any point to even watching it. I feel like you should just go read the manga. So, I'm going to put it in S tier. Chainsaw. Man. Chainsaw blood! Music was freaking amazing. Call of the Night. This is a lot of fun. This is a fun little vampire show. It's really, really cool. The music is awesome by Creepy Nuts. Uh, very cool show, but I did lose interest in this. I only watched up to episode 10, I think, and then I lost interest in it. Um, the, the, the main character, Nazuna, is very, very, very cool. And the other main character is kind of boring, but Nazuna is very, very cool. Um, and again, the music, honestly, the music is probably the best part of the show. <laughs> I think the music is really, really great. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to put Call of the Night in B tier. Just a really kick-ass soundtrack, man. All right. Call of the, we'll just put Call of the, no, I'll put Night at the bottom. There we go. Alrighty. Alright, Classroom of the Elite. Fuck this show. <laughs> this show is so fucking edgy and pretentious, dude. I watched the first season of this show, started season two, and I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about because this entire show, this show felt like that fucking Robert Pattinson Batman show to me. This show thought it was the fucking smartest, edgiest, coolest thing ever. And it just wasn't. Like, the Batman, the Robert Pattinson Batman movie I enjoyed. I thought it was pretty solid. But this fucking show, I do not enjoy. This show just thought it was the absolute, like, smartest, like, Sherlock Holmes motherfucker that has ever existed, ever. And it just isn't. The music was weak. The characters were so boring and so underdeveloped. The Everything about this show, all of the characters talk like this. And the main character is supposed to be, like, this giga-ultimate-brained ultimate guy. Like, he's supposed to make Senku Ishigami look like a fucking incel. He's just a, he's just a freaking dumbass. <laughs> he's just an edgelord, dude. He's nothing more than a freaking edgelord who thinks he's the coolest shit in the world, man. I hate this show. <laughs> Call of the Elite, Call, uh, Classroom of the Elite is going to be our first D tier. <laughs> classroom of the edgy. <laughs> Alright, I'll put Classroom Elite. Let me know what you think of this freaking show in the comments, y'all. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Uh, I did not enjoy this show. I'm one of the only people, but I did not enjoy this show. Uh, I watched up to episode 6 and I completely lost interest. The characters were just so hateable, in my opinion. I didn't like any of them, except except for Rebecca. I did like Rebecca quite a bit, but there wasn't enough of her in the show for me to want to continue it. Um, and I hated all the other characters. I did not like the main character whatsoever. I hated Lucy. Uh, and then all the other characters were just nothing. I didn't care about them whatsoever. Like, the big muscle guy, I did not give a shit about him. Um, the animation was gorgeous, the opening was really boring, I do not know why people like that opening. Um, yeah, not a fan, not a fan of Cyberpunk Andrew Rodgers, sorry. I'm gonna put it in B tier. There's definitely quality there, like the fights were very cool, um, and the animation is great, but that's not enough for me. I, I need more than, I need more than great animation and great fights. I did not enjoy the story, I did not enjoy the characters. Alrighty, on to G's! I probably did that wrong. Death Note, of course. 
<laughs> oh man, what, what needs to be said about Death Note, man? Death Note's fucking awesome. It's literally like a Breaking Bad anime. It's so freaking good. I will say that once you get to um, the, the arc with the evil organization, it definitely takes a big drop in quality because like the first like 12 episodes are freaking amazing. But it's still really good after that. Like, there's still, like, a lot of great stuff after that. Especially, like, the ending. The character of Nier, I actually found myself really enjoying. Uh, so, I forget his name, but the Delete guy, I thought he was a lot of fun as well. This show is awesome. It's a classic for a reason. I'm gonna put Death Note in S tier. There we go. Alrighty. Demon Slayer. Here we go. Okay, Demon Slayer. One of the most popular anime right now. Um, here's the thing with this show. The show is very, very good in terms of its action, in terms of its, like, keeping the viewer engaged. Like, at no point when you're watching the show will you ever be bored. But the show also just lacks in a lot of places that I really feel like it needs more thing. Like, season three I thought was very solid, but the final episode of season three I thought was just about the only standout episode of the entire show. Like, so, like, the first, like, ten episodes of the season were all fine. They were all fun to watch, but it was all just, you know, one big fight. You know, you had some backstory in there, and that was pretty much it. It was all just pretty much one big fight. And the character development that they did give with, like, the Mist Hashira and the Love Hashira, I couldn't, I didn't really give a shit about it. Like, it seems like every single one of the characters in the show just had this horribly tragic backstory, and it's just, like, wash, rinse, repeat that eventually, like, we're gonna get in this, we're gonna be in this huge fucking battle, and then right before this character does something epic, they're just gonna flash back to their, like, old, it feels like, like, old school shonen tropes. And I don't know, like, I watch shows like, um, I watch shows like Dr. Stone or whatever, which we're gonna talk about very, very soon, where they, you know, they have, like, all of these awesome characters, and we don't know any, we don't have, like, any of this. We don't, like, jump back to this backstory. We don't need to know, because nobody fucking gives a shit. And I just feel like Demon Slayer thinks it's way better than it actually is. But then, the final episode of Season 3, I actually thought was extremely good, because it really developed a few of the characters. It actually gave... Something that I've been wanting since season one. I felt like season one was very strong because it was a lot more focused on the characters. Season two, I very much enjoyed, of course, because of the final battle. But the first five episodes of season two were just nothing. Completely fucking nothing. It was five episodes of bullshit. And I thought season three was a step up from that. Not a step up from the, from the season overall because I thought the fight between Gutero and Daki was just so amazing. Um... And honestly, the, the upper moons in season three, I thought were actually a pretty big step down, especially the fish guy. He was an absolute waste, just like seriously, like this guy was like ranked higher than Gudero and Daki and he, he was just nothing. He was such a forgettable fucking character. Um, and then the other guy I thought was a lot better. I thought he was a lot more of a threat, but even then, I definitely thought Gudro and Daki just felt way more powerful than him. So, and they ranked higher than him. So I don't know. Demon Slayer is a really mixed bag for me. In terms of action and whatnot, it's definitely S+. Plus. But in terms of, like, writing, character development, storytelling, it's really, really, really low, honestly. So, I'm gonna put in the middle there, and I'm gonna put Demon Slayer in A tier. Alrighty. There we go. Alrighty, Dororo. Oh, boy, this is a kick-ass show. If you haven't checked out Dororo, I highly recommend it. This show has such an awesome fucking story. Really awesome first opening. The second opening sucks. Um, the ending's a little bit rushed, in my opinion. Like, it kind of just ends very abruptly. Uh, but it's a really good show. It's a really high quality, really, really good show. It's a MAPPA show, so of course it is. The characters are great, especially Haki Hakimaru. I think he's a really cool character. Yeah, I love Dororo. I'm gonna put this in A tier. Dororo. Boom. Darling in the Franks, I did not get far in this. The character of Zero Two is very, very cool. But aside from that, this show's got pretty much nothing. It's pretty much just Evangelion, honestly. It's pretty much just Evangelion. Uh, I know what happens at the end of this, though. I only watched, like, ten episodes of this. I know what happens at the end of this because it's kind of infamous. And it, seems, it's, it looks really stupid. <laughs> but, um, and it de but it definitely changes from not Evangelion in the end. So I guess there's that. But the first half is just Evangelion. Um... And, uh, like I said, Zero Two is a pretty cool character, and she definitely keeps you very entertained. But, I don't know. I, I don't think the show is really anything special. So, I'm gonna put Darling in the Franks in the... I'm gonna go with a, with a B tier, yeah. Darling. I'm just gonna put Darling Franks. Boom. Alrighty. 
All right, Dr. Stone. Oh yeah, baby. I'm gonna be honest, Dr. Stone is probably one of my favorite modern shonens. I freaking love Dr. Stone. Like, I just binged season three, part one a couple of days ago, and I thought it was fucking awesome. Like, I definitely don't think it's ever managed to reach the highs that season one reached, but it hasn't dropped too far below. Like, Dr. Stone is such an awesome story. The characters are just awesome. I love them. Like, you, obviously you got Senku, but... Even like Kohaku, Ryusui, Gen, they're just such awesome characters and watching them go back and forth with each other is just so much fun. Um, and yeah, like the only problem I have with Dr. Stone is that, is that at times Senku feels a little ridiculous in how like OP he is just cause Every single time there's an e there's even a minor problem in Dr. Stone, Senku is just like, I've got the idea, I've got the plan, and then he just completely just like, almost without a single hitch, just pulls it off and just defeats everything, man. It's kind of insane. I'm gonna take a drink of Dr. Pepper real quick. Mmm. Very, very delicious. Oh yeah, Dr. Stone's awesome. Uh, if you haven't watched it, watch it. It's such a bra it's such a banger. Season 2 did have a bit of a rocky ending, but I thought Season 3 was awesome so far. I cannot wait for the second half in October. I love it. I love Dr. Stone. I'm gonna give Dr. Stone an S tier. Um, actually, I feel like Dr. Stone deserves an A tier. Dr. Stone. But I would say it's one of my personal favorite modern shonens. Alrighty. Don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro. I didn't really enjoy season one of this very much, but I did think season two was a lot more fun because season two, it felt like the characters were really developing a lot more, like this relationship between Nagatoro and the main kid. I forget his name. Um, I, I felt like it was really growing in season two. So I, I thought season two was a big step up from season one. Uh, so for that reason, I'll put it in B tier. There we go. All right. Uh, Dong and Rampa, the animation. Oh yeah, baby. Anybody who knows me knows exactly where this is going. In my opinion, Dong and Rampa, the animation. I'm gonna count this as like the whole anime. So Dong and Rampa and Dong and Rampa three. In my opinion, it's fucking awesome. I am somebody who has played all of the Dong and Rampa games. I have read all of the books. I have read all of the manga, and I have watched all of the anime. I am a massive Dong and Rampa fan. I've got my shrine right over here, out of camera. You can kind of see a little bit over there. I adore Dong and Rampa. It's one of my favorite series ever, and it is an easy S plus. In my opinion, the anime adaptation of Trigger Happy Havoc is phenomenal. I think it is an amazing adaptation. I think it is so good. Like so many people like to talk shit about Tr Trigger Happy Havoc because of how much it meanders. Like similar to like Bleach, it like meanders so much, and you have to go through so many like pointless little parts in the trials in order to get to where you go. And like all of that is cut out in the animation. And people talk shit on the animation. So it's like. Pick your fucking lane, dude. Do you hate all of the extra meandering stuff, or do you hate it going fast and rushing to and rushing forward a little bit more? Like seriously, pick your fucking lane. I love the anime. I love the Dong and Rampa anime. All righty, do it yourself. This is a fun little show. This is a cute girls doing cute things anime. I enjoyed the hell out of this. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, just a lot of fun. Really, really fun little show. I put this in B tier. I'm gonna put this in B tier. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm completely out of space in my B tier. I'm just gonna turn my F into a B tier so I can continue doing that because we're not gonna put anything in F. Alrighty. Uh, Data Live. I thought this was a lot of fun. I really, really, really like Data Live. I thought it was a super fun show. A lot of people don't like it, but you know what? Fuck them. I enjoyed the show. Uh, I think the openings are pretty solid. Um, a few of them are at least. The season four opening I thought was pretty solid. Season three I thought also had a pretty good opening. And a lot of the characters are really fun. Like I really like um, Kurumi, Tokisaki Kurumi. I like Miku a lot and I like uh, the, the twins, the orange haired twins, uh, Kaguya and Yuzuru. The main character is getting some, some good development. And yeah, I think it's a fun show. I'm gonna put Dale Live in B tier. All right. Okay. And finally, Don Machi. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should put this in with, um, is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? Cause I feel like I wanna talk about this one a little bit more. Uh, you know what? No, let's talk about it right now. Um, I've only seen up to season three of this, so I haven't started season four yet. And I've heard season four is really, really good. So I definitely need to go uh, watch it, but I really enjoyed the first three seasons, but at no point do I feel like the show was anything too incredible. I feel like I got close in season two with the Apollo Familia arc. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, but I don't feel like the show ever really reached like a really, really amazing peak. I, I feel like it's really, it's really good. And there's some really great characters. Obviously, Hestia Vestia, obviously. Um, I really like Lu Lily Ruka Art as well. Um, Eyes, Valen, who's in what's it is also a pretty cool character. Uh, Belle is a pretty solid main character as well. 
Um, yeah, there's a lot of fun with this show. It's a really cool show. It, it keeps you entertained. It keeps you on your toes. Um, it's a lot of fun. I do definitely need to check out season four very soon. Uh, I will definitely get on that very soon. But um, I, since I haven't seen it yet, obviously I can't rank it. But I would give Don Machi a... I would give it a B, very close to an A, but I'm going to give it a B personally. I just feel like it hasn't really reached any like major highs yet. Like it's gotten close, but I just feel like I need to, I need more. I need more from that show. Alrighty. There we go. I will also say this, the music in Don Machi, extremely forgettable, extremely mediocre. Alrighty. Alrighty, we're almost done here. E, I've only got one for E, and that is Evangelion. I know this should go and end where Neon Genesis Evangelion, but I was going to put it here just to get this one out of the way because this is one of the most beloved animes ever made, and I am just not a fan. I'm not a fan of Evangelion. Honestly, in my opinion, the only good thing about this show is the opening. <laughs> Literally everything else about this show is just so forgettable. The story is so forgettable. The characters are so boring. Like, I don't understand why people love Asuka and Shinji so much. Like, Misato, I thought was a pretty solid character, but like, Asuka... There's nothing about her that I think is cool except for maybe her design. Uh, Shinji I thought was decent. I, I watched like episode 23 of this. I don't know, man. I don't understand the love with this show. I think it's a fine show. I mean, you can watch it. You can have some fun with it. But I think the opening is by far the best part. I'm going to give Evangelion a C tier. Like I said, I just really think there's nothing really to latch onto in the story. Like, maybe, maybe there is in, like, the last few episodes in the movie and all that. But it doesn't really matter if you get so bored by the end of it that you don't even care. Alrighty. Oh man, I did not realize what was left. Okay, <laughs> give me one second, y'all. Actually, you know what, y'all? We're gonna call it there. I feel like uh, this video has gone on too long. I am very, very tired. Um, I, I feel like we got a good, we made a good dent in this. You know, we got A, B, and D done, which are three of the biggest uh, categories, definitely three of the most loaded ones. Um, we're gonna leave F and G for the next episode uh, because I've got a lot. Of, there's a lot of shows in F and G that I feel like I'm gonna want to talk about a lot, and we're already 40 minutes here, so we're gonna call it there for this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. DK Guillotine, uh, signing out. I gotta rest. Whew.